commiserations, of course, to John Eng. Another fantastic showing at one of these regional championships, but it's not going to be his day in the long run. He's not going to be making it into finals. Connor Finton punching his ticket for a fantastic matchup against Alex Kreckler. I think Connor kind of went under our radar all weekend. We talked about him every time we bought up a standings graphic. By the time we saw just how well he was doing with his build of the Lugia, you know, some of those adaptations, looking at something like the Raikou that we saw, you know, does ha also have the evil tile. Those pieces in there we didn't quite see as well. Very heavy counts on the Lugia V-Star, uh, you know, foregoing this path to the peak tech, which honestly was never relevant for John in that matchup. He wasn't able to play it in a timely fashion at those elite moments, and it kind of just became a useless card for him. That Collapse Stadium, the better stadium in that one took away that two prize knockout that John could have fished for. Fantastic lines of play, seeing the game on so many levels. That was the MVP there. That saved him from forcing a game at number three. And you got to feel for John, though. John has wanted to break through to win a tournament for so long. Got second place back in 2019. Just coming off of, of a heartbreaking top four finish. Still a great finish right in top four. And still a wonderful placing here of top four again. John's going to get his win one day. Not today, though. Connor is going to be advancing into the finals. And again, like I said this before earlier, but Connor has been wanting this for two years now since, mm -hmm. since the return of events back here. Uh, he already is a regional champion back in 2016, I believe, but it's been a few years since he's been back on the final seat. And nobody loves, uh, he is somebody who just loves the game and embraces the game so mm -hmm. much. Him and his friends and the people in his support network, even as we were here today in the venue, the people watching the games outside, he had a huge crowd around him of people who were just supporting him. They wanted him to thrive, they wanted him to succeed. And you could even hear the crowd sort of in the, in the background there as we were playing through that last match. They're so happy for him. And he's not done yet though. He's got one more match Ooh. to play, one more opponent in Alex Kreckler. Already getting ready for this match. I'm so excited to see how these players are going to clash and who will be our Arlington Regional Champion. I mean, Alex Kreckler has been crushing Lugias all weekend. Some of those builds, being able to use that Aerodactyl V-Star has been absolutely essential for him. So a lot to unpack before we start looking at the finals. But honestly, looking at the weekend that we've had so far, uh, you know, to see Lugia on top, we started actually ourselves with the Lugia Mirror. And where did we end up, Ethan? We ended up back here with the Lugia Mirror. It's kind of been a, a bit of a talking point of this weekend. Lugia is still on top. It's still showing exactly what it can do. And the debate rages on. Path of the Peak was the hotness coming in, but we just saw Path of the Peak fall into a collapsed stadium build. You know, there's certain options that people have been foregoing, and we've got to be careful about how we go about that. That said, these minute decisions have been so essential. So we're going to sit down and we're going to hear from Connor Finton about his advancing into the finals. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the interview lounge slash saloon slash the interview corner. I don't know what we're calling it now, but I am here with our finalists. We just saw win on stream. Congratulations, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I can hear some adoring fans out in the crowd. Hopefully our microphones are picking up that love and affection. I know the players and the viewers here have been so excited for all of the Pokemon we saw today. Biggest regionals ever. How are you feeling to lock in your spot in the finals? Oh, it's incredible. It's, uh, I'm very, very happy to be here for sure. And I think that, oh, I thought that they were, my bad. <laughs> I suppose we should acknowledge the elephant in the room, our other finalist, Alex Kreckler. A little bit more applause there. Give it up, folks. I can also hear the viewers on the stream as well. So I know that you were looking to counter the meta, Alex. Now that we have you with the Lugia, how are you feeling about this matchup? Uh, not to not to brag, but I'm feeling pretty good about this one. This this you is should, exactly so. what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I've you, been trying to dodge them all day, and I've done it so far. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I think okay. we might have gotten to. Oh, the, uh, so not so not too com uh, confident in the uh, the matchup. You think it's going to be that bad? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so not feeling so confident now that you've made it all this way, but I mean, that play in the last set was so clean. Is there any strategy you think you could employ, or is it just going to be up to the luck of the draw, do you think? Well, I can pray to the Poke Gods that his deck decides that it doesn't want to do anything, because that's, uh, that's probably my best shot. And for the viewers who missed your run, Alex, remind us again what your deck is looking to do to beat Lugia. So the concept of my deck is if I win the flip, I use Aerodactyl V-Star's V-Attack, 
which means he can't get a, get his Anki Ops out, which mm. basically means he loses the game. All right, so it's going to be the battle of the Summoning Star versus the Ancient Star Ability. Now, listen, I, you know, we managed to kind of work this up right before we get to the finals, and I don't want to take up any of your time. You've got a lot of preparation to do, or maybe not so much preparation in your <laughs> case. Uh, to get onto the stage, we're going to get our contenders ready to go and finally find out who is our Arlington Regional Champion, so don't go anywhere. Hello everyone and welcome back here to the Arlington Pokemon Regional Championships. It's going to be our Masters final match just around the corner. There's been so much Pokemon played today and it all comes down to this one final match. I'm Sarah Hunter joined here by Kyle Sablehouse and we got a chance to talk to the two finalists and uh, <laughs> they had a couple words about this match. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, maybe some more than others as uh, Alex might be feeling pretty comfortable. Definitely has a good game plan going into this matchup, but you know, it's Pokemon. We, we gotta see how the cards fall and I'm very excited to see what we have in store for us in our finals match. And we're not gonna make you all wait too long. Let's actually head down to the table as our players are getting ready for the match. Of course, this one is going to be Connor Finton going up against Alex Reckler. Connor on the Lugia going up against the Vikavolt. Yeah, Vikavolt is definitely a uh, surprise Pokemon to see here, having so much success. But not Alex. We uh, love seeing him back here on the big stage with that top eight NAIC finish. Plenty of other accomplishments to go with his name. And look at that Aerodactyl V-Star trying to make its way to a championship. That Aerodactyl V-Star, that's so cheeky. Just once that move's done, 
No, it is. You are done. And that could be a nightmare situation for Lugia. Yes, Lugia has such, had such a strong representation here in Arlington. It's in the finals. Fantastic run through this top eight. We'll have to see if it just has a little bit more steam to make it to the end. Yeah, uh, Connor's going to be trying desperately to get that Lugia V star out and moving. Summoning star going to be so crucial in a matchup like this. Got to get those Arky up established. And uh, my friend has two and a half hours to catch his flight, so he better play quick. I mean, as the players were talking about, it, it is one that could actually be decided pretty quickly. Either this Aerodactyl gets the setup and Luya can't do anything, the birds can't hit that bent, or it can't get set up and Lugia gets the summoning star. It, it comes down to those first really crucial turns. Yep, V-star abilities. Check your markers. Those are going to be so important here. Uh, prize cards as well, because uh, this is a 1-1 one, one Aerodactyl line. We need to see those pieces and uh, uh, desperately two times if Alex wants to be the champion. Yeah, they talked about the, oh, the turn to Aerodactyl and all of a sudden it popping off, turning off the V abilities. But with that line, might not be the easiest thing to get accomplished. You definitely think need things falling correctly in your favor. Well, we will go ahead and take our first peek at what's going on here in the prize cards. Five good ones, six good ones, all right. Aerodactyl piece is not there whatsoever over on Connors and three different energies to the capture and one of the V guard, but we'll still have plenty of pieces because you have to get your own setup going too. You going there and beyond that hope that you can yes uh, this is going to be uh, definitely a bunch of fireworks here in these opening turns very important to see uh, what goes on here and I think Connor just said that he's going first so uh, definitely a big piece to remember here as we start this match being able to go first, you can start making sure those Archeops get pitched away into the discard and make sure you can set yourself up with the best, best success of getting those down on the next following turn. Evolution incense to start instantly pulling an Archeops out of the deck. Yep, we've seen this Lugia deck time and time again, and sure enough, the most important piece is finding those Archeops, getting those into the discard pile, making sure your resources are there, and get that summoning star going, because <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> there's a, there's an Aerodactyl waiting to turn off everything you've ever dreamed of. Yeah, I mean, uh, we talked a bit beforehand about it, but uh, it really just comes down to who sets up. Like, once you're beyond that, I mean, yeah, there's so much time on the clock, but if you can't really do anything, like, what's the point to that? You're even talking if Alex all of a sudden sees the birds down go, go down on the other side, that in a lot of normal cases, that's just a scoop. Yeah, and uh, Connor... It's going to be thinking about the following turn here now. The hand not too impressive, but grabs the Luminion, thinking about uh, the future turn, and has the capture energy too, so at least a second Pokemon. And this is a very strong start here. Love to see the Oranguru as well. Maybe you could even use Luminion if you wanted to play that down, throw a supporter on top, not worry about Marnie, but you know that Melanie is usually the, uh, the card to worry about from your opponent. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about what we kind of wanted to call this deck earlier on, and yeah, Vika Volt is such a strong part of it. But that Lenny, you can't discount that either. Being able to get that energy attached is just so strong and so crucial in a couple of moments of being able to get that Vika Volt winning cases set up. All right, and Connor's going to go ahead and pass the turn here now. And it's over to Alex, who's going to take a peek at these prize cards and <laughs> get some good news, I guess. <laughs> We're not going to be able to grab anything fun, but uh, nothing too bad there in the prizes. Yeah, and a good chance to look over what is, in fact, stuck in those prizes. Makes it so when you're going through the deck check, you don't have to quite be counting quite as much. You already know what is exactly I there. I think Alex was desperately hoping that a lightning Pokemon was in his prize cards because he's got a bunch of energies, a speed lightning, and no way to get this hand moving. A bunch of Mews, and looks like not much help here either from the Mysterious Tail. Just going to go grab another energy? That's your fifth. I mean, anything that you can get out of there. So maybe this Mysterious Tail has a better chance at finding something that's going to be a bit more helpful than all this energy. Yeah, I mean, you can use one of these to retreat and try again. You've got another Mew in hand and just uh, maybe find something. <laughs> the trekking shoes into something. Who knows? But one really good item card, the Battle VIP Pass, is going to be found. That's going to work out. Sure, you just had a handful of Mews and energy, but... It's going to be enough to get you to that battle VIP pass because getting more of a setup going down is going to be fantastic. And then what do you want to be looking for at this case? We see the Vika Volt, Radiant Greninja, 
being pulled right out. The Raikou, actually. Yeah, this is uh, just a nod to how important it is to be able to stay in the prize exchange here with Volukia V, which is likely to be a V-star on this following turn now. Just go ahead and get that Raikou charged up and maybe get something moving here. Uh, two cards off of the concealed cards there at this point. And going back in, Ultra Ball in hand. Just have to decide what you want to be getting rid of. There's quite a few energy, but it's going to be w another Mew. I guess, yeah, you don't need to throw one of those. A cross switcher that will get get tossed for that Aerodactyl. Well, you can you can always hope, right? <laughs> and, uh, Connor hasn't shown anything yet. So you, you do know there's a Luminion in the hand, so at least a supporter will be available at some point. But maybe you can put Connor on the one-turn clock now. Yeah, you either... You have it or you don't. If it the summoning star doesn't come out this turn, then know that there is going to be this threat of this Aerodactyl wow. on the horizon. But Evolution Incense, turn things off, be able to go and grab this Lugia V-Star. This is going to work so well. We see that V-Star under flip over the Archaeops, making their way onto the bench, and that is such a solid start for Connor. That is exactly what you need to find here. Now is going to be able to look through the deck and find all of these energies and get this Lugia charged up and... Uh, you start to wonder about what other Pokemon you want to attack with in this instance, uh, just because y you get worried about that Raikou uh, and, and on the follow-up. And then at this point for Alex, sitting here, seeing the V-Star counter flipped over and the Archaeops on the bench, what are you looking for? <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to need to reuse this Raikou a few times if you want to stay in the match, because uh, there's going to be an endless flow of energies and Pokemon to attack with those energies. Uh, from this point on. And that means that Vikavolt is not very strong. You're only dealing 50 damage at a time. You're trying to do an item lock, but items are usually used to find those Pokemon or get towards those energies withdrawal, and you're, you're just not going to be doing that. <laughs> it's, they're already available for Connor. Yeah, as cool as the Vikavolt portion of this deck is, there's a couple of different varieties to make sure that you have everything that you need up against the field. The Primal Turbo is over on Connor's end. Going to be used and power up this Lugia. Get ready over an attack. Yeah, we see holding on to some powerful energies. There's uh, opportunities there for uh, cards like the Archaeops to get involved in uh, the attacks. So we've seen uh, Stoutland sometimes to knock out some of these Pokemon. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the Aerodactyl completely from play here, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, this way, too, you'll be able to get the two prizes as opposed to the one. Make sure the prize rate could be a bit more favorable for you. <laughs> that's and, uh, just going to be that's it. That's the scoop. Game one going over to Connor, being able to get those Archaeops out. And that's the end for this Vigavolt deck that first turn. Yeah, hopefully he's got TSA pre-check. He's trying to get on that flight nice <laughs> and early now. And uh, up one game must feel fantastic. He was... Uh, he was Feeling down on himself going into this matchup, but that really is how this works. The yep. opening turns are so important. Being able to go first there just means that you have that opportunity. And boy, was that a good summoning star. Yeah, it certainly was. We've seen before that sometimes Lugia takes a couple of extra turns to get the cards needed, but everything coming together for Connor in this really crucial moment. He was nervous about this matchup too. We'll have to see how this game two goes because this is Alex's opportunity to show what this deck is about and what it can do. Absolutely, yeah. When you think about the matchup, even on paper, there's a lot of lightning Pokemon. There's ways to turn off, uh, get, getting to those item cards and you can turn off my V-Star ability. It's like, okay, that's really bad for Lugia, right? But uh, it's, it depends on how the cards flow. If, if you can't find them at the right time or if you can just get all these cards early enough and there's no problem. Wow, that's a, a lot, lot of Pokemon. A lot of Pokemon in the prize cards for Connor here. It's going to be Luminion, Bird, just everything going on out. The Uranguru will be the starting Pokemon over on Alex's end, the Vika Volt, but the Battle of VIP Pass will be able to start search out something like this Aerodactyl and put this pressure on. Yeah, and that's the, the importance of uh, the build here for Alex. Has so many ways to use these item cards optimally and get a 1-1 line like this Aerodactyl lined up. We see that a uh, card featured in this list is the Forest Steel Stone, which can also all but guarantee that this Pokemon will find play. So being able to get all of this going and start by going first basically means that Alex is going to do what he wants. Yeah, taking the opportunity to also put this Raikou V down on the bench and I up the rest of the deck, figure out how the things are and make sure you're set up to go. But already this is, oh, it's better than game one. Yep, yeah, and we didn't see the Radiant Greninja here, so maybe that's a card that's already in the hand or there, there is a way to continue to draw from this point. 
to look through speed energy in hand. So attaching onto the Raikou can go ahead and draw two from the deck. Yeah, we see a lot of fringe cards that could help out in some instances, but nothing particular for now. And no water in the discard for Melanie uh, for the next turn. So we'll see if Alex is able to piece all of this together. Start things out for Connor. I have wisdom to start. Jean a quick ball there, an alter ball in hand. Definitely ways to be able to get Pokemon and grab one of those Lugias and start trying to get Archaeops as well to throw those away. Yeah, we see the Archaeops there. The quick ball is in hand too. So we'll be able to get both of those into the discard pile and go and find the, the, uh, the Lugia if necessary. Or it has to go actually for this Luminion, it looks like. I didn't know if there was uh, another Pokemon in the hand now, or if he's just going to have to leave it up to the top five. I mean, at this point, too, you want to go for your own setup, but also staring down this Aerodactyl on the bench, staring down Alex with a few cards in hand. Has the Lugia. Lugia so in hand, so even strong. better. So get that set up and be able to Marnie. See a couple of cards, but try and make sure that Alex won't be able to have anything going for him next turn. We've seen in a lot of matchups, when you go second with Lugia, you better get two of them because they don't like to stick around too long. And going to just have that opportunity now. And Connor's going to try to do a little bit of disruption here. Alex is holding on to a lot of cards and feels pretty content. And maybe uh, just sticking him on a four-card hand is what you need to do. Especially, too, you just need to push him back that one turn. You just need to make sure your summoning star goes first. So that Marnie is going to come down. These X, these Hands thrown to the bottom of the deck. Connor able to grab five. Be interesting to see what Alex has on his end. We're going to see the evolution incense for that Lugia. And that's going to be going into the hand now. Maybe uh, Oranguru could just leave that on the top of the deck if there's nothing else that uh, you want to think about from this hand. This point just pass over. Right, Wisdom was used so early on, so unable to safeguard it for next turn. But now we'll have to see if Alex is able to get their trekking this, shoes. Yeah, these shoes are very important. They're the only way that something can get done this turn. And it just finds water energy. This last shoe is so big. Not there. Ultra Ball. Huge find. That was a huge walk, a huge trek to get there. But finally, the Ultra Ball, the last available card to get at that point, And we'll be able to go in and look just a little bit further into that deck, it'll be the Crobat coming out, Dark Asset, to be able to get more cards. Yeah, that was, uh, that was getting very scary, uh, down to the very last card here now. But we'll be able to play out this hand a little more, too. The energy onto the Aerodactyl, we'll, we are fully committed here to getting out the V-Star. Just go all in. You can oh, get that Aerodactyl V-Star. That's stick, not good. But that's, that's not what we needed here. Yep, there's a, there's a couple supporters. <laughs> Energy search a ditto. Uh, this is this is not okay. No, I mean this deck can be so powerful in the options that it offers, but there's also so many pieces to it, and it's just missing that one piece to the puzzle that's gonna make all that can make all that different. Marnie will be able able to get another opportunity to get something. All right, these are the biggest five cards of the tournament here for Alex now. Desperately needs to find a way to get this going, and that is so bad. The Aerodactyl V just sitting on the bench. You're able to go first. You're able to start getting that pressure, but unable to follow through the training court and just the pass over to Connor. Connor's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got three energies, a pumpkin, and a and a what is that? A boss's orders? Private wisdom. That'll be eight. Always felt grabbed off of that. You needed that one to be something useful for you, but not this time around. Capture energy onto the Lugia. Your opponent gives you the window where you could use your summoning star, and he just can't find the Lugia. And if he placed it on top with the Oranguru, it would have been available, but I, I, maybe he used it early, but he Had knows. to use it to start the turn, so I wasn't able to safeguard against the Marnie, and that's the thing with these Marnies, they can be so strong in that wow. disruption, just has to be a pass back over. Yeah, this is unreal, both players trying to get something going here. There is a water energy in the discard pile that Melanie finally gonna get used. And is there a way to get the Aerodactyl V-Star out? I still don't see it. I don't think so. Sitting on 
quite a couple of cards, but not anything that's really going to be able to help out. This is such a frustrating situation. Yep. Of course, uh, energy for the turn is still available, so maybe just go with that plan that's worked for so many other decks and attack with the uh, the Vika Vault for the time being. Avoid items uh, being uh, an answer, but no, going to go ahead and retreat now and go on this aggressive route, maybe drawing into something with the Fleet Footed. Speed Lightning Energy, that's a nice find. Two additional cards. That was last time. But if you, what are you going to get that's off of those cards at that point? Because... Yeah, this is the big piece that I've been looking for here is the Radiant Greninja. It's so helpful in these early stages where you play so many uh, ways to find that. these basic energies and uh, continually bring them back. It's just a nice way to refill the hand over and over again. This point, sitting on a lot of cards. No Aerodactyl, but just going to be taking the KO Connor onto the Aranguru. Finds but the Ultra oh. Ball. That's going to be huge. This Lugia V-Star will be able to go in with this Ultra Ball and grab that out. The Aerodactyl V-Star was unable to get going, unable to lock that down. And now with the Lugia V-Star being active, we'll be able to go ahead for that summoning star and bring those Archaeops out. Doesn't have very much left in the hand, but it is an energy and a boss's orders as well. So this is a very strong start in game number two. And we were talking a lot about about that Aerodactyl, and uh, it's it needs to evolve if you want to get things done. Yeah, and unfortunately, just things were not coming together for Alex at that part. Actually, both players were given a window. Neither deck was really functioning quite how you needed it to, but Connor is going to be the first one to get out of that precarious situation, and now can start setting up. And it's like, what now for Alex? I mean, this is the worst case scenario. Yeah, this is this is huge. You lose w your biggest piece there in the Raikou V after this spot because you've already seen the summoning star. You need to have that Pokemon uh, to come back into the field and take a knockout on this Lugia because if it continues to take V knockouts, there's no way you're going to come back. Yeah, already getting two prize cards for Connor and being able to get things set up to taken out. Be the quick ball away in the boss's orders just to go in and bring this Ditto V out. Yeah, this is the one way to continue to chain together this Raikou. You play down the Ditto V and it can just take the spot uh, of this Pokemon. It's so awkward for many decks to just continue to use Ordinary Rod and have the answer over again to bring this Pokemon out. So a uh, really nice spot here to, to play this Pokemon and think of these situations. Yeah, and at this point too, you're down a game. Yes, things are tricky, but you do have to play for what you can in this Raikou can definitely try it do its best to put some pressure out. Going to go ahead and V transformation, bring out that Raikou. Melanie going to throw the energies on there, and uh, sure enough, the uh, the lightning is ready to go too. So at least a response for this first Lugia, and we're going to see some prize cards taken for both of these players now. It's definitely a bad situation, but could it be worse being able to get this energies onto the Raikou and grab that out? The lightning rondo could definitely hit a good chunk of damage, taking down this Lugia V-Star. Yep, sneak in a Fleet Foot as well and uh, draw an additional card. Plenty of cards in the hand now for Alex, but he's going to have to continue to find ways to stay in the prize race here as uh, Connor played down most of his hand, but thankfully does have some options now. Plenty of ways to attack here. The Raikou and a Quick Ball in the hand too. And this... Easy Rare Raikou, love this card. It's such a cool addition. I mean, there's a couple of different Pokemon that these Lugia lists like to be playing, but this is such a nice one. Being able, with that amazing shot, do damage both to the active and to the bench. Yep, and going to go ahead and bring up that Radiant Greninja, and there is a nice knockout lined up on the bench as well if you want to target down that Zapdos. Yeah, be able to make sure that... Well, Alex is trying to keep himself in the prize trade that you can get ahead of it, taking two prizes and only two prize cards away now from taking this thing down. Yep. And of course, the uh, the way to go about in this matchup to take knockouts is going to be that Raikou once more, and that is a V Pokemon. Connor doing a fantastic job with the prize mapping there, having just needing the two uh, prizes to close out now. And you're so close at this point for a matchup that Connor felt so uncertain about. Has the birds out? Has the attacker? 
out on Alex. It'll be the vehicle we, with that air balloon being put into the active slot. Yep, just looking for opportunities now for Alex to continue to draw prizes. It really just looks like Raikou has to get the job done here. And there's plenty of answers to this Pokemon, especially with the amount of prize cards that are taken. A Radiant Charizard could come out of nowhere and take an easy knockout there. And uh, you could be calling Connor your, uh, your regional champion. Yeah, and I mean, Lugia wants to get set up. Got those attackers. You could be good to go. This point, just quick ball. Looking for that, getting that Mew. Yeah, I'm just going to add that into the hand. There's looks and there's so many cards gone from the deck already. Not much else to work with, but look at the hand size here. Well, I found all the cards that are supposed to be in Alex's deck. They're uh, and sitting on so much right now, but just needs to find something to chain together. Yeah, if we see uh, the cross switchers use this turn, there's no Pokemon that directly just gets, uh, well, uh, besides the Crobat, that would be knocked out from the Raikou. So maybe you could see that uh, be avoided and Alex could go after some prize cards here, but uh, just depends on what he, what he thinks is the biggest threat now. Just get something going so that you could Potentially, if Connor makes it through the next turn without finding that win, without finding the two prizes, that you can maybe have an answer to be taking those last couple that you need. Yep. You see the cross switchers floating to the front of the hand, but certainly a decision still needed to be made. And such a crucial one, too. At this point, you're behind the prize trade. The deck didn't do necessarily what you wanted, and it will be the cross switchers making their way out. Lugia V on Connor's end into the active to be taken down by this Raikou. Yeah, uh, this is the fastest Raikou promotion we've yep. seen in a long time here. Yep. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and line things up here. Quick ball looking through the deck now. Is there a way to get this done? Radiant Charizard going to be moving into the active spot, and that's a big knockout. Congratulations, Connor Fenton, your Arlington Regional Champion. What a victory. You can hear everyone cheering him on. This is the matchup that he was fearing, the one he was avoiding. And to take it down 2-0 to becoming the champion of the biggest Pokemon regionals is insane. That was the fastest pop-off I have ever seen in my life. And you got to do that. Go ahead, embrace your wife. Congratulations, sir. You are now a regional champion. And you got to go catch your flight, man. Go grab your stuff. <laughs> I mean, he's been speed running through this whole competition. Day one, I mean. He's been on a tear the entire time. He was, he came to Arlington, he knew, he was ready. He was ready to go. And honestly, such a fantastic victory. That's unbelievable. Been following his run this entire performance and sure enough, was 801. I think he was uh, the, the, the number one player going into day two and did not stop there. Continued to stay at table one for basically the duration of this tournament and found his way winning on the biggest stage against a matchup he was scared about. But you know, that's Pokemon. You got to get the cards and they were not there for Alex this time around. And that was such a scary game too as well. And the fact that you had that window. All of a sudden, the Aerodactyl was getting set up and couldn't quite get that Aerodactyl V-Star. Gets passed over to you. You look at your hand and it's like, oh, wait a second. Like, I don't really have it either. And being able to get out of the situation first to be able to take this victory in a 2-0. It is such a well job well done. Yeah, it, it was it was terrifying in game number two. Your opponent passes with the Aerodactyl, did not have the answer there, couldn't find the evolution. And there's so many ways that it could have been done. It just wasn't there. And you're given this opportunity. You look at your hand after Marnie, you draw, and oh, I'm not going to do anything either. <laughs> what, do I, what do I do? Just pass the turn. Next turn was the Ultra Ball, and that was all that he needed to go ahead and close out here in the biggest regional to date. A little bit 